Hello everyone, it's Carla. I am Carla Sanders, Cosmic Crone. Happy New Year. We are um, Saturday afternoon, January 1st, 2022 for the full moon, no, excuse me, the new moon, Divine Feminine Astrology Reading tomorrow in just under twin, about 23 and a half hours will be the full moon and uh, the Sun is in Capricorn the moon is in Capricorn they are at 12 degrees 20 minutes of Capricorn right there together and here in the Divine Feminine Astrology reading I am here to share with you what the planets are speaking about from the Divine Feminine perspective so the big news as ever is Venus retrograde in Capricorn and I will be teaching more about that I, I've got uh, some new teachings and insights bubbling through um, so Wednesday I believe I will have a live stream to talk about that right now <clears throat> one of the biggest things is that Venus is today um, and still active, still effective tomorrow. Venus is, con is in a square to Eris. And as I look at this chart, Venus is well into her retrograde. She's pretty much full speed into retrograde. Um, she has left behind Pluto. She has yet to meet up with the sun. Uh, that's happening a week from today on January 8th. And she's just cruising. She's cruising. And the other aspects that are happening in this chart are, um, they're speaking a little bit of chaos. There's, um, it's like everything is underway. Everything is mixed up. We're, um, you know, a quarter of the way through the descent. And we're just right now we're just feeling it we're feeling what 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 feels weird about this what's going on and uh, the descent is about stripping away everything that you are ready to strip away that you are choosing to strip away and and uh, it's relinquishing really you are actively at choice choosing deciding to let go of everything you believed about yourself and that will be part of the topic on Wednesday when I talk more about Venus retrograde um, but that's it that's a chaotic place as you feel these parts falling away a lot of this see it's happening in your unconscious mind it's happening through your dream life it can be happening through the work the universe is doing you know things um, boundaries being violated or news or health issues or something is happening that upsets your apple cart so to speak and we want to keep all our apples together, get them back into the cart, back into the basket, up, you know, get that cart back on the road. Um, but that's not going to happen, not yet. Not until every apple is accounted for, scattered throughout the, uh, the land, and you are on your own naked in the underworld that's where you're headed good news right um, this full moon comes at a moment where uh, I am advocating darkness um, I am advocating actively choosing to go into the darkness instead of being swept there by the chaos or situations beyond your control um, or if there are those situations happening meet the darkness consciously 
As always, we have allies in the chart when that's happening. Um, Venus is square Eris. Eris is the goddess of chaos and um, she makes trouble. And she is one of our advocates in this time of, um, of dismantling patriarchy and dismantling colonialism and white supremacy and all of the aspects of our world that are not working and that we, we would like to dismantle. But for some of us, that's a very scary proposition. And this is true anytime we are faced with change. So Eris is here to say, change is coming, change is coming. And yeah, um, you might one day get what you want, but first it's going to piss you off. Uh, she is here to piss us off. She is here to get under our skin. Um, and so Venus is making the square with her right at this um, this particular moment in the retrograde and then of course she will do it again as we are emerging she, after she goes direct when she's in her shadow phase so we'll see what that looks like when the time comes approximately a month from now um, what else is happening we have a lot of conjunctions we have a conjunction between Albion and Uranus and they they are in the 11th degree of um, Taurus and they are in a flow they are in an um, favorable or enhancing aspect to the new moon they are picking up that new moon energy the Sun and the moon and Albion and Uranus both in earth signs Taurus is considered the sign of the body the the personal earth the earth within you and your, your own planet the planet of your body and Capricorn is considered the earth sign of the institutions um, the governing bodies the the ones that give structure to life and um, sometimes make collective decisions for us whether we like them or not um, it's it's really the but it's also the executive function of your mind your, your sovereignty um, is also Capricorn so it's it's very much we've we've got this trine in a mind-body connection space Albion is the thresholder and Uranus is the surprise you didn't see coming and those can be happy delightful or they can be frightening horrible terrifying I did you know disaster crisis um, and I always like to remind people that Uranus is spiritual epiphany and we are ripe for spiritual epiphanies right now. Uh, everything about our lives is saying, jump up to the next level. Raise your vibration. Shed what needs to be shed so that you can. The popular word is ascend. And yes, I don't think I mean the same thing with ascend as some people, so I don't like to confuse my terms, but I almost like the um, physics term of when excited electrons jump to a new level, then new opportunities are present. They can make new combinations, they can change, and you've suddenly got a new atom instead of the old atom, or a new molecule instead of the old molecule. So it's that kind of shift in frequency that is available and then with Albion as the thresholder it's going to present itself as a door that you walk through and it will very likely involve the life portals of birth sex or death um, and that covers most of the bases the moon and the sun in Capricorn 
are illuminating and merging identity and intuition, um, presence and uh, presence, yeah, uh, personality, presence, identity, and intuition and emotion. So the inner and outer worlds are merged and they are here in Capricorn really connecting to Capricorn is ruled by Saturn and so it's it's connecting to your well isn't it interesting that this time of year we are full of dreams and plans structuring laying out if we if we rule the world what would we be creating this year well in some ways we do rule the world and in some ways we have to go with the flow uh, and and be available for more and better um, and of course that's what Uranus is all about the more and better and the unexpected opportunity so that's that's going on right now those two are singing in close harmony with Nessus in Pisces which means that whatever is happening at this new moon whatever portal is opening whatever decisions you're working on they are going to involve ancestral healing healing of old wounds or more likely what will what you will notice first is triggers those wounds will come up because chances are the wounds the um, ancestral legacy of trauma of uh, this is how we do it in our family um, th these are the people we come from and all of the ways that can crush you as you're growing up it can uplift you but it can also crush you especially in this era where so many of us are jumping into that new vibration the um, the trauma and the pain and struggle the abuse um, of our ancestors our parents and even in our own childhoods will cling to our ankles and want to hold us back and so once again at this point as you consciously dive in go deep make decisions activate a dream shed what's not working including the old traumas or anything you constructed out of those old traumas they're gonna jump right up and say wait just a hot minute here you don't get off that easy so it can be it can look really challenging it can look like things are falling apart it can look like you are doomed doomed to repeat the pattern but Nessus always stands for this is the moment that you heal keep going I was showing you this because well you can see it in a lot of different ways it's a projection it is something that was fed to you so you constructed your reality out of it and now you're looking at it as um, as a safety net, as the familiar, uh, as a problem, as an obstacle, when really it's a doorway. Everything is a doorway. So with Venus, <laughs> Venus and Eris, and then the Moon and Albion and Uranus and Nessus, and then Nessus is already also connecting to three fiery planets in Sagittarius. We have Mary Magdalene, the Great Attractor, and Mars. Great Attractor and Mars are sitting on top of each other 
in Sagittarius. The great attractor is, is basically God. It is the infinite, the unknown infinite that is calling us always calling us and amplifying and because we are mortal and human and we hear through our bodies that moon that intuition the things that we feel in our gut and our bones and and perceive with our senses the great attractor uses these experiences of our life to get our attention and she she will amplify those experiences so she's there in the background in a lot of ways I, I just had this flash that she is like grandmother spider in the center of the great web of the universe um, and there she stays and yet she's always weaving always communicating and always sensing everything that is touching her web and two of the things that are touching her web are the great divine feminine teacher Mary Magdalene consort feminine Christ consciousness consort of Yeshua and Mars the uh, quintessential masculine principle of the zodiac fire lust sexuality focus fertility in the sense of the igniting masculine force, what that contributes to fertility, and directing and being of service. The warrior is a protector and defender. It has been, the warrior has been perverted I think by patriarchy into being the conquistador, the tool of conquest. Um, and there is that element, going out and getting and bringing back, um, hunting down, taking aim, directing our attention and our focus until the job is done. And we need that. I, I personally have a lot of trouble with that. I am severely challenged by staying with something. Why? Because a lot of times the things I do, I choose, are at the edge of my skill set, the edge of my comfort zone. They are taking me into these realms that I've just described to you. And so I need a lot of Mars to fire me up to kind of put the blinders on and to keep me moving forward towards the completion of the project. And so we have that right now. And what is our completion right now? Well, chances are you're doing two things simultaneously, which will be feel very contradictory, hence that sense of chaos at this moment. You are going deep and shedding and healing and eliminating and clearing and going into the darkness and going into stillness and you're also creating and visioning and and so at the moment I forget what experts tell you to do I have a son, I'm, I'm in the coaching world, as you know, and you know, people say time to plan for the next year is July of the previous year or November of the previous year, not New Year's Eve. And that, that's true up to a point. I mean, you know, if you're running a company, yeah, you can, you, you've got to always be anticipating a year in advance in some ways you, you've you're you, well even in human life you know what do you want to accomplish this year what do you think you're going to accomplish this year uh, those may be two different answers so there's this idea of 
boom, burgeoning, new beginnings. And yet we are still in the space of quiet, shedding, listening, silence. And when, it won't be very long, at the end of January, Venus will go direct and she will be rising up out of the underworld. And this year is unique. You know, Venus is not retrograde at New Year's. I know the last time was like six or seven years ago, 2014, 2013 to 14. So, ooh, seven years, yeah. Um, so periodically, she, she gives us this pause at the moment when we're all in, up in our new beginnings. So focus on the pause part right now. Focus on clarity. Focus on what needs to be in place inside of you in order for you to have the year that you want. And of course, that means every you, you cannot fill pour more into a full cup, especially if it's full of things you don't want, things that haven't worked in the past. So that's my pep talk there for New Year's Day. We have a conjunction between Vesta and the galactic center. That is applying. Vesta is moving closer and closer to the galactic center. Vesta is the priestess. The galactic center is another large extra solar system um, avatar of the divine feminine. The black hole at the center of our galaxy. And so Vesta is once again creating the altar to the goddess. She's, um, the last moon, she was with the great attractor. Today, she's with the galactic center and she is heading towards a big conjunction with Venus and Mars in about 40 days. Um, so, this is, she's just completed a conjunction with the sun uh, early, uh, sometime during Sagittarius. So they are, they're just sitting there. Oh, we've got, we've got Hecate and the Lilith asteroid in Aries and they are, they are in a long uh, kind of enduring conjunction in Aries. They travel together, then they separate, then they get back together again. So this is the crown at the crossroads and the disowned feminine within. This is a call to own your feminine power, to do what you need to do to heal it. And you've got Nessus and um, Venus retrograde and the new moon. And all of these things um, activating. And Lilith is saying, this, this is what's going to come up. And when you look at me and honor me, I will serve you. I will support you through this healing. This is, I am what it's all about, is what Lilith is saying. And Hecate is there. She knows this is an underworld journey, and she is there, the guide to the underworld. And there's one more pretty potent um, aspect that's going on. And I'm mentioning it because it's coming up all over my Facebook feed and the people I'm talking about and to. And it's, I think it's part of my personal healing journey as well as many of the women I work with. And it has to do with Juno. Juno is the goddess of uh, the sacred marriage, sacred union, the women that I work with are all craving that. They are done with sex that is just garden variety or um, 
it, it doesn't touch their souls. It ha has no sacredness to it. Uh, they're also, and, and that sacred union is also other than sex. It's also about your relationship to yourself, to your masculine and feminine within. Juno is the goddess of social justice for women and children, and that is the part that is really up right now. She's also the goddess of money, because um, one of the weapons of power in this uh, structure that we're living in, this society, is money, and it is used against people so often. The, the desire for it, the having of it, the having not of it, the withholding of it. it um, it's a power play in relationships and it's a power play in societies and governments. And Juno is a goddess of money. And so when she's talking social justice and what's good for the women and children as a foundation for a healthy society, she is also saying that's where the money goes. And that is where the money will be generated. It will pay back um, in a way that is just and peaceful and aligned and healthy. And so Juno, we're going to be watching her a lot more. She's heading into a conjunction with Venus, the Sun, Pluto, and onward, she's going to hook up with her husband, Jupiter, somewhere in Pisces. Jupiter, by the way, is at zero Pisces, and he loves it in Pisces. An abundance of spiritual opportunity and spiritual food is coming your way with all the blessings that go with that. Um, now, Venus is in a trine. She is flowing with Psyche, who is a wounded character in, in the Zodiac, but she is a wounded character who heals through successfully um, completing some trials and finding her courage and finding her own identity. And so she goes on that journey um, no thanks to Venus, or rather every thanks to Venus. Venus is her nemesis in this story. And so they are actually working together in this chart. So this is more that is getting stirred up as Venus is on her underworld journey. And then Psyche is in a square to Black Moon Lilith. Black Moon Lilith is the goddess before patriarchy. She is the, the one who creates all of this energy that we're talking about in the great attractor and the the etheric realms, the, the vibrational realms, the void. She is the one who brings it into form and gives us life. And she makes everything from atoms to galaxies and everything in between. So she uses that energy of cosmic fertility and she runs it through us she is a dirt goddess and so these taurian bodies that we have these personal earths of our body black moon lilith uses us to create she creates through us and she is a square to Psyche. She is giving Psyche a hard time right now. And Psyche is probably, is, is at the place of not, um, not using that Black Moon Lilith energy yet. So that's been going on for a while and it's gonna go on for a while. But that's one of the things that's happening at this full moon. So you can see how we've got power and love and beauty and queens of heaven and bright and shining uh, magnificence in this chart combined with the internal, the deep, the painful, the wounded. 
and everything that that engenders. So tomorrow at the full moon, or even now, I mean, it's happening now, so uh, you, anytime, when you have a moment, I keep calling it the full moon, it's the new moon. This is a time to go within, to be silent, to get your journal, to let your sun listen to the still voice of your moon. And take all the contradiction, contradictions and chaos that may be coming up and ah, just kind of hold them. Create, I, I teach women about womb centering. So put them in your womb and just carry them there and let them sort themselves out and don't judge them or try to make anything of them just yet. They'll, they'll begin to align and shift as we keep going through this, these extraordinary aspects over the next few weeks. So that is what I have for you for the Divine Feminine Astrology Reading. And I wish you the happiest of New Years. I also want to let you know that the Venus Year Overview, Venus Retrograde Annual Overview for 2022 is available. So if you would like my support in reading your chart and noticing how the astro astrology of 2022 is feeding into and supporting and highlighting your natal chart, then I have a link I will put in the comments for you to reserve one. Um, they are extraordinary readings, extraordinary healing sessions, and I look forward to having one with you. Many blessings. I don't know how to stop this. It says starting. I hope I, I hope I was actually doing a video here. Oh, that's wild.